In this video I'm going to be putting the Xtool D1 Pro 20 watt laser to use working on some more laser projects. I'm going to be making a hat box for my favourite bowler hat. The starting point for this is using Boxers Pi which is free on the internet and using this software you can build a whole variety of different boxes. I'm using the rounded box which creates flexible panels so that you can have rounded corners but I'm specifying a quite a big box with quite large radii on the corners. And here's the resultant uh, pattern which I've put into Lightburn and in fact what I've done is I've created two boxes one for the base and one for the lid. Always wear your safety glasses when using lasers. And away we go with a bit of engraving. I've put the um, D1 Pro in my laser housing in the uh, workshop. Here I've got fume extraction and it's uh, a lot safer being in the housing. But we've got air assist running and I'm just engraving my logo and here doing a bit of cross hatching to create a pattern around the side of it. This is a bit speeded up of course. And this is the first panel completed. So here I am just removing it from my uh, housing. I've done this cross hatching round the side. And now I'm working on the flexible corners, the rounded corners. These are quite long burns these because there are so many cuts. But there it is, all cut out. It's got dovetails to join them together, but it fascinates me how this works. It really is clever. They come out so flexible. There are so many uses for this technique. You can see the uh, underside is a bit charred. There's the lid that I was engraving earlier on with the logo on it. And here you can see all the parts all laid out. And I'm laying out these side pieces carefully so I keep the grain lined up. This took several pieces of plywood as you can see. I'm just turning these over and locking the little dovetails together. I have to just hammer them with a block of wood because they are very tight joints. It's very clever how it goes together. A bit of uh, Gorilla Wood glue. And here I'm just painting on this very thin piece that the laser cut out. And this is just to sort of form a, a jam uh, for when you put the lid on so the lid locates properly. And I can line this up easily because I've also burnt the lines on that other piece so I know where it's got to sit. And then I'm weighting it down with some lead fishing weights which I use a lot when gluing up. Now it's time to assemble the lid. It's a little bit fiddly but it all goes together beautifully. It's very satisfying to build. So that uh, needs a little bit of a knock here and there. And then the top of the lid. And once it's actually all pushed together, it holds together really nicely really impressed with it. And here I'm working on the base part and this has a narrower opening to accommodate the uh, the hat. The rim of the hat or the brim of the hat will sit on that rim. There it is. Goes together perfectly. Very satisfying. Now what I'm doing is just painting some glue on these extra supports I'm adding on the inside. These are all bits I designed and cut out. And it just gives it a bit more rigidity, makes it a bit stronger. And I put quite a few of these at various thicknesses. The other reason for putting them in is it gives the screws for the hardware something to uh, bite into. Once I've got all these extra supports in place, I then go around painting some more wood glue into all the joints. And this just fixes it. 
Once it's dry, I can start adding the hardware. I drill little pilot holes, and these little brass um, catches made by Cheney of London are fantastic. I think they're originally designed for uh, these old fashioned record players with the wooden lids, but they're still available on eBay. Yeah, very pleased with that, very happy. Now it's time to make a handle. And the uh, D1 Pro is fantastic at doing leather. It cuts it out so nicely. does smell a bit, of course, cutting leather with a laser. But you can easily uh, wipe the edges with a damp cloth. Here what I'm doing is using an edge beveler just around the edges, getting rid of that sharp edge because it does do a very clean cut. And here I'm just wiping away the soot from the edges where it's uh, been done. Next job, dyeing it. A bit of Phoebing's uh, dye and then burnishing the edge. A bit of Neats for oil. This keeps it supple, stops it drying out. Which is very good for straps. That's what they uh, use on the saddles and things. And this is... Aussie leather conditioner which is brilliant at uh, preserving leather and proofing it so give it a generous coating of that and then we've got to think about the lining so first one I used I just used some duct tape and some satin to create this sash which I can put around the inside of the lid And here is uh, some extra bits to help with the lining. So this is a base that goes in the base of the base. And I'm covering that with uh, double sided tape and sticking that down. So then you can drop the satin in and pull it over that sort of rim that I've made there. And this was stuck down with double sided tape again using the fishing weights just to hold that base down into the bottom of the base there. Once it's all stuck down and evenly distributed I can then lift it out and I fold it under that plywood rim and stick it all down. Like so. And that just hangs nicely in there. Looks good. I was happy with that solution. These are some little uh, feet that I've designed in Shape of 3D. And this is in the slicing software so that I can 3D print them. And I've printed them out in flexible filament, sort of a rubber-like filament. And these little brass bolts fit in there very nicely. And I've got some nylock nuts and things to fix them onto the base. Like so. You can just see them bolted there on the inside with some washers. This is the leather handle I made earlier. And I've got some brass repair washers and brass bolts and dome nuts to fit that. It's just a case of assembly. It's one of my favourite bits really, assembling these things. It's quite satisfying. I have at this point done a light sanding on the box and used spray polyurethane varnish, a couple of coats of that, sanding with uh, 600 grit between coats. You can see I've rounded the edges off with the sandpaper. I'm very happy with how that looks. Contact adhesive, Evo stick contact adhesive. It's in both sides to be stuck together. So coating the plywood and uh, coating the underside of my lining rim. Then you let it go dry to the touch and then press it together and it all sticks. There we go. 
positioning it very carefully and pushing it down and it's all fixed into place double sided tape inside the lid this just holds another piece of satin in place yeah I'm not into soft furnishings as you can see but it'll do the job and then we fix the uh, sash round the inside using contact adhesive again and this hides all the edges and this worked out very well as you can see it's come out all right so that's it done really very happy with uh, how it's come out with the uh, Boxers Pi software, really look on that as a starting point and adapt it to your needs like I have done with this hat box. There are so many different boxes available on there and they, you can adapt them to make just about anything. But this is my Christie's bowler hat, Christie's of London. And look at that, perfect fit, almost like it was made for it. Just the job. And what else have I been doing with the laser? More eyeball key rings. I've been doing lots of saddle stitching, fixing all these together. As I said, the D1 Pro is fantastic at cutting out leather. And I've also been engraving some more glass tumblers for a friend of mine using the RA2 rotary tool. And I also made this box using the uh, D1 Pro. It's all slotted together and uh, another very satisfying build. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please like, share and subscribe and I'll be back soon with some more videos. More rubbish coming soon.